tell you something. When I was coaching in the Eastern Sea in the uh, mid to late 70s, early 80s, there were lots and lots of good players in that league at that time. It wasn't even just Class C. You look back then at Plentywood, Scobie, uh, Opine, Outlook, Antelope was Poplar. in a state championship game. Poplar was really good. Was that just kind of the golden era of hoops? It was really good. It was really good. And I mean, the Puckett brothers from Peerless, very good players. The Hatfield brothers from Flagsville, very good players. Uh, Antelope, uh, the Gunther kid. Westby had Alan Nielsen and others. I mean, Selvig boys and Outlook, there were a ton of good players. So was it hard to believe then that literally four decades have passed since Class C anyway has seen two East teams? I mean, that was mind-boggling when I researched that stat last night. It, 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 it I won't say it shocks me, but it surprises me because, you know, at, at that time, boy, I don't know if there's any better basketball than what there was in the eastern part of the state and eastern C, eastern B, didn't matter what. I mean, really good players and the schools have just dwindled in size so much that I can see where that maybe has happened simply because some of those schools are no longer in existence. But, yeah, I'm surprised. Before we break down any specific games or seasons or whatever, I know people would like to know, and I would like to know, what are all those coaching stops that you've had? Can you even remember them, head coach and assistant coach? Yes. Um, 1975 to 1980, I, for the first two years I was there, I was the assistant girls coach. And then on the, in the third year there, that I was there, I was the head girls coach. And then in the fourth year, I, didn't, you know, I was the assistant girls coach. Fifth year, I didn't coach girls at all. All five years, I was a head boys coach. In 1981, I was going to go back to school to get my endorsement in English. And I got a call from Frenchtown, ended up being there for a year. And we win the state tournament with really, really good kids. So I was extremely fortunate there again. And then I spent the next four years in circle. And we played for the state championship in boys one year. I was an assistant in one year and the head girls coach in the other. So at the time, my ex-wife, my wife at the time, and my ex-wife now was the head girls coach the first two years. And then I was her assistant. And in the last two years, she has a baby. And so I became the head girls coach and boys coach. And we had really good kids there too. So had a great stop in circle. That was a lot of fun. And then the last 18 years, I was in Sydney as a head boys coach. So I can remember most of them. And, and you know, being a coach in, at any level in high school, I think, is just always fun. And if you've got kids that play hard and really understand how, how fun it is to coach kids that play hard, coaching a lot of fun. 1980 then. Let's talk about that one specifically. Uh, you're able to come out on top in the last, you know, the last state championship featuring two East teams. What do you remember about that game, that season? Well, the season we play Opine four times. They lose four games all year long, all four of them to us. We were fortunate to beat them because they were good. They were way bigger than we were. Uh, Norm Dearland's a six, seven kid, good player. The, the Lawrence kid, I think it was Brent Lawrence, and I think it was Ricky or Randy Moss, both in that 6'3", 6'4", area. Kevin St. John, 6'1", six foot, six foot guard, and then they had a little, I think it was Nelson, but I don't remember the, little, the other guard's name, but they were really good. Lauren Baker, very good coach, was uh, the head coach, goes on and, and coaches great at Northern Mo Montana College uh, and elsewhere, if I remember right, but, but Northern Montana College did a great job. They were really good and really well coached. And, and every game that we played with Old Pine got closer and closer, closer to the state championship game. We had never seen a box and one the whole year long, and we saw it in the state championship game. And <clears throat> state championship game in Class C in the 1980s, it's run and gun, run and gun, and, and there's a lot of points scored. And ours was about 41 to 35. I mean, it was low scoring, and I thought we did a nice job. Uh, taking care of the ball and, and getting good shots off. And we had the best player in the state, in my opinion, Doug Selvig, 6'5", guard for us, and great player at University of Montana. And in my opinion, was the best player in the state of Montana that year. So we had the best player, plus a bunch of kids that accepted their roles well and, and played Kevin, uh, Kevin Ordahl, a guard that could play it and could shoot it. I mean, we just had kids that that accepted their roles and really were great kids to coach because they were all about us and nobody was about me. So it was a lot of fun. 
what about this weekend then? Here we are 40 years later, and we're getting a chance to see two Eastern Sea Powers. Like you said, four times you guys played that year. Here we go again with another Scobie and Fairview match on Saturday night. Yeah, third time this season, and I think since I've been helping, I helped last year in this year, only two years I've been helping again. We played them, I think it was three times last year. They got us all three times. Once in regular season, once in the divisional championship, and once in the third and fourth place game here. And they're 2-0 and against the CFC. We're due to win with Galdegat, so Scobie is really good. And they're really well coached. They've got really good players. We have to play at, at the top of our game. We have to play our A game, and we've got a lot, we've got a lot of good players too. But we have to play well. They're really, uh, they're, they're just diverse. They've got so many kids that can do so many things that it, it's, a, it's a handful for us, but we're sure as heck looking forward to it. So final couple of questions. How much is basketball? We've seen it obviously within the family and some college athletes and stuff like that, but how much has hoops just revolved around your entire family, your entire life? My whole life. You know, I've got four kids. All of them played basketball. We had the good fortune that they all were pretty good high school players. My daughter, my daughter Jordan played uh, basketball for University of Montana. It was had a great career here and is now a member of the coaching staff for the Lady Grizz. Uh, my son Jay's coached a little bit in Sydney. My daughter Ashley coached a little bit in Culbertson. So my son Ryan is now coaching in Casper, Wyoming. So they've all been in it. They've all enjoyed it. I mean, they had no choice. They had to like it because it, mom and dad were going to drag them every place to make a play. But basketball has been so good for me because I've met so many good people, officials, other coaches, kids that have played, it's been great. And, and the kids that I've ha had the good fortune of coaching, uh, I've been blessed. You kind of answered my question, my last question a little bit there, but outside of the family, just all those relationships, you and I were chatting before the cameras were rolling about all these old coaches and these different familiar names. You coached against Norm's my uncle up at Opie. I mean, what are those relationships that bouncing across the state to some different places too? You know, when you grow up, you think your best friends are always going to be those guys that you knew and were great friends with in high school. My best friends in life are the guys that I've coached against, coached with, and met as a result of basketball. So, you know, obviously Lauren Baker was a, was a great coach that I got to coach against, but Terry Bakken was a really good high school coach. Zuni McLean was impactful. Don Holst, coach for the Grizz here, was my roommate in college, and we've been good friends forever. You know, and Bruce Robertson, I, I, I could, Joe Suk, and I could name 25 to 30 coaches that were really good coaches, in my opinion, that I've just had a, the wonderful opportunity to get to know and have become friends with.